Hey everybody, before the show starts, log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to book a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions solved. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, and on this episode, we're talking about the main reason why the music industry ignores new artists. Now, that's not to say that the industry doesn't want to have new artists in it. That's not to say to all of you diehard independent people, right, that you're not going to be a part of this music industry because you all have to remember that the music industry revolves around everybody in it. The lawyers, the, the PRO people, the roadies, the sound venues, the, the people who build speakers for the sound venues, the guitar makers. This is the entire industry. And we need artists. We need all types of artists, all new artists. But I'm telling you, in this episode, this is going to be the number one reason why, all right, the music industry ignores new artists. Now, Today's video is not relying so heavily on copyright, but I said I would always put it in the video, so you can watch Copyright Explained coming up next. If you want to donate to the channel, you can do so right over here. And if you want to skip, uh, blah, blah, blah. if you want to skip Copyright Explained, you can do so right below. But here we go. Copyright: the sole right which an author has in their own original literary compositions, the exclusive right of an author to print, publish, and vend their own literary works for their own benefit. Now, of course, there are two main rights of copy that the music industry operates and revolves around, and that's the masters and the publishing. And the masters is referred to as the sound recording copyright. Sound recordings as in records, masters, phonogram, or the audio recording file, i.e. the wave, mp3, aiff, of the composition and or song. Now, you can collect your master recording royalties or the proceeds due from the sale and streaming of the master recording via your distributor like TuneCore DistroKid, and if you have a major label deal, then it's them, all right? Now, you can also collect the performance royalties via the master sound recording via Sound Exchange and PPL over in the UK. Sound Exchange is based here in America. And if you are outside of America, any other organization that collects these sound recording performance royalties are referred to as neighboring rights. Now, publishing is referred to as a performing arts copyright here in America. Okay, performing arts as in the composition, sheet, music, MIDI files, publishing, or song to be performed. You can collect the performance royalties for the composition via BMI, CSAC, ASCAP here in America and PRS over in the UK. And other countries have their own performing rights organization as well to collect those royalties for you. All right. Now, you can collect the mechanical royalties due from the composition via Harry Fox, Music Reports and the Mechanical Licensing Collective here in America. You can also collect your mechanical royalties over in the UK from MCPS. So now. Lyric Fine right here. You can get your lyric display royalties from Lyric Fine and Music Match, but that's that. Let's go through the six rights of copyright to be exercised to the fullest extent of the United States Code under Title 17, and that's the right to reproduce. The right to reproduce the copyrighted work in copies or phono records, physical or digital format. The right to prepare derivative works. The right to prepare derivative works based upon the copyrighted work. The right to distribute, the right to distribute copies or phono records of the copyrighted work to the public by sale or other transfer of ownership or by rental, lease or lending. And then we have the right to public performance, the right to perform the copyrighted work publicly, the right to public display, the right to display the copyrighted work publicly and the right to digital performance. And that's the right to digital audio transmission performance. OK, so we're back from Copyright Explained. Thanks for watching that. Check it out now. This video, actually, I actually did this video back when I wrote the, um, when, I, when I produced the show, How to Make 64 Music Publishing Checks, because I'm going to explain this goes hand in hand. What I did was I built a calendar based on a post by the rap juggernaut here in Atlanta. I thought this was a very intriguing post, and I said, he is absolutely right. But let me add some sauce to it. Let me actually turn this into a real calendar. So what you're going to see in today's video is me actually showing you the availability of the music industry when it comes to new artists and just artists in general who need to get stuff done. You're going to start to see how much time is actually available for meetings to take place and, you know, and, and budgets to get secured before you become that high priority person. All right. Uh, without further ado, let's hop into the computer. 
All right, everybody. So we are back on the inside of the computer, and this is going to be uh, this is this is going to explain how the music industry ignores a lot of new artists when they're just getting started and they're trying to get you know things to A and Rs to managers to anybody that can that can make a situation or make a help them make a play. Okay. And I, I, I always like to bring it back to I don't care how independent you think you are, right? I don't care how, um, you know, high up the independent ladder or how, uh, you know, uh, separated you are from the so-called industry. You work in the industry. This is an entire makeup to support everyone who makes music. I don't care who you are. And at a certain point, you will cross paths with people who need to help you make a play and if you are unknown, there is going to be an optimum time period in which you should pitch your music to certain people and a time where it won't be optimum for you. And most of the time, this is going to affect new artists or those who don't have enough clout. And it's OK. All right. Because there are a lot of people who don't have enough clout in certain situations, even if they are big. So uh, today's inspiration for today's video comes from the rap juggernaut. OK. On Instagram. And I've been following his account for a while. And this is one of the things that I saw back in July that really piqued my interest. And it was the inspiration for uh, behind the 64 music, how to get 64 music publishing uh, royalty checks. So uh, what I did was I built a calendar, but I'm, but I'm going to explain it. It was based off his post. Uh, and that's how I got the 64 checks. And this is how I'm going to get today's video right here. So today someone will load a song to drop on Monday, July 4th. Here's a toast in honor of you not having a clue on how this works, moron. All right. So now these words are a little bit harsh, uh, but you got to get used to words like this because the people who know how to play this game and then there are those who don't. And the higher you try to climb, the more you will find that, oh, I don't know this. I don't know that. And so you got to know the right times in which you need to get your music to people, pitch it to people, contact managers and people who have positions of so-called power, if you will. All right. So check it out. Free game. Timing is crucial for example. Today is Thursday, July 1st, 2021. There are 125 working days or 1,000 hours, assuming an eight-hour workday. 58 non-working days, including 26 Saturdays and 26 Sundays. Six federal holidays in the U.S. that's falling on the weekdays. And when, when he means federal, we're talking bank holidays, when financial institutions are closed on a weekday. Okay. He says, I, I don't forget, this is the entertainment business. Fridays we are planning, which is very, very true. And for the weekend, uh, uh, we're planning for the weekend or discussing it. Mondays we will talk about what happened over the weekend. That means taking an extra 52 days off. Well, let's put this into calendar form and let's see what it looks like. Now, I already have, let's just, let's just, let's just close off. Let's, let's, let's clear the deck here. So um, so let's let's do Friday planning and let me talk about Friday planning for those who don't understand. Friday is the day where the executives are leaving the office by one o'clock, two o'clock at the latest. They're hopping planes to New York or L.A. or to somewhere in Atlanta or Miami, somewhere in the south or executives are going here, there, to and fro. Managers are on tour with their artists if they're like a medium weight. If they're higher weight, they're just they're off. They're out of the office, okay? And they're only taking calls from those who are important to them. Okay. Anybody new, anybody trying to pitch any type of um, you know, new music, new ideas, whatever, you're gonna have to wait until the top of the week. All right. But all that is happening on Friday. The artist, if you're trying to do deals with artists, Friday isn't the day for you. They're trying to get to promo events, shows, people are on flights, on trains, on buses, whatever it is, all right? So if they're not already expecting you or your pitch game isn't so, so tight that you just can't, can't make the play happen on a Friday or a weekend at that, then Friday isn't going to be the best day for you. So we got to cut off Friday. Now let's talk about the Monday morning quarterbacking, as I've learned it. And let's go to since we're in uh, we're in September. Let's go to September. 
All right, so Monday morning quarterbacking is this. Everything that happened on the weekend, any any you know mishaps that happened, anything great, any side deals that happened on the weekend at the clubs, whether it be in the strip clubs, in the back of certain high-end clubs and VIPs, whatever, all this stuff is getting talked about on Monday from the managers all the way up to the label execs. They're communicating with each other. Managers are communicating with label execs back and forth. They want to know how was the turnout at the show, what the crowd was like, yada, yada, yada. This, that, and the third. What you come up with? What do we have to look forward to in the next couple days? What can we do here on these days? We already have plans that, you know, because what you did on the weekend will affect what we do in the next seven days. Monday is out for new artists who are trying to reach executives and managers. It is not a good day for you. So as you can start to see, you can start to see your optimum days show up here. Okay? So... So now that that's out, let's just go ahead and take our weekends off because, you know, that's out. I mean, you got to have a really great elevator pitch at this point to make a weekend work, especially a Sunday. You know what I mean? So now you see your optimum days start to happen Tuesday through Thursday. Okay? So uh, let's go and start adding some more options here. Now, here's one thing I want to add in. Now that we have Mondays done, let's go and add in our bank holidays. Look at there. Labor Day is out. So that's a complete out. Like You don't even have that option. If we go back to the top of our calendar, we'll find that. Let's go back to January. New Year's Day is out. That Friday, then MLK Day is out. And I just want to clarify, for some of these bank holidays, BMI, ASCAP, CSAC, whatever, they're going to be closed. All right? So... We'll we'll get we'll get on that in a minute and how these bank holidays will affect your royalties and stuff like that or just contacts to these uh, different agencies that pay out money or even the label the back end offices at the label they get closed all right so that's that's what it is President's Day you saw was there um, Memorial Day is obviously observed and all of that now we got our bank holidays we got our weekends chalked off here now here's the play. Here's, here's the thing that you didn't know about, all right? When people get ready to take a weekend off because they've been working corporate, all right, what we got to do is I like to add this thing called a shutdown, holiday shutdown. When I was emailing people last week, I got hit with, um, you know, the, the email response, the automatic response saying that people were out of the office on Thursday until Tuesday, So now you have label execs or people in positions who are taking off. They're taking days off. Let's go back to the top of our calendar once more. Okay? How they shut down is not in the beginning because I didn't put it there. But let's look at where we have another shutdown, real shutdown, Memorial Day weekend. We really can push this back to Thursday. This really should be a Thursday right here because – um. Let's hit save. All right, that Memorial Day weekend should be a Thursday. I don't know why it changed. It didn't go to the 31st. should be on the 31st. There we go. Save. All right, bet. Now you start to see what you're losing days because if Memorial Day weekend is a huge thing, get out of here thing, then um, people got to get on flights yet again. They got to do all of this. People are prepping for big concerts on Memorial Day weekend. So forth and so on. Okay? So you don't really have the time. You still have your Tuesdays, your Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Those are going to be your optimum times. Now, if you're clicking off the video now, you're going to miss some games. So I would say stay on. Okay? But let's look at the end of the year. How do we fare at the end of the year? A lot of artists, new artists, do not know. Okay? Back when I made a video about how to actually, um, why I forgot what it was. It was something that I did at the top of the year when I was telling people, teaching people how to release their music and saying that the top of the year wasn't best. Here's why it's the top of the year is not best. A lot of people think that they're going to make a deal happen here in the fourth quarter after Thanksgiving and you sat around the table with your family and said, you know what, I am going to call that exec and see what, what they have going on and maybe we can make that deal happen before the top of the year. That's not happening, 
I can tell you right now. This is, this is the other half of the holiday shutdown right here. The entire month of December, the label is closed to any entertaining any new ideas. They're going to tell you, come back in February or come back the last week of January. Okay? I didn't write I don't know why I didn't write it in on the calendar over there, but come back the last week of January, top of February. We should be ready. The reason why they're saying that, there's going to be a lot of hiring and firing happening here. December is a firing and hiring month. Some people don't even show up at the label anymore at the top, okay? So at this point, you've got June, the second point. This is the fiscal year for a lot of people, okay? This is the beginning of the fiscal year. They're planning for January 2022 in June 2021. A lot of people don't know that. This is your second month of hiring and firing. Some people don't know if they're going to keep their jobs at this point. Okay. So June for you is an optimum month if you want to get a deal. I'm just telling you that right now. Okay. So therefore, if you are considering doing some stuff at the top of the year, you're going to want to start your work in January, but not pitching to executives. You're building your buzz from January, February, on down into March and April. And then once April kicks in and you finish out April, you're pitching by May because you want that fresh budget that comes in in June. But see, people don't know this, so I'm, that's why I'm giving you this game right here. Okay? So now that we have the shutdown, let's have the, sh the holiday shake off because you got to shake the holiday off. Okay? Now, this is the quickest shake-off you can get right here at the, that first week of January. Most people at BMI, ASCAP, CSEC, all your royalty-bearing departments will be back at work. The lower-level people, okay? But the higher-ups, they ain't back. They, they still shaking it off, okay? They're still on vacation, especially in that first week. So you can't expect anything from them. And like I say, entertaining ideas from new artists at the top of the year, that's not your best bet. It's best for you to get in a little bit more, at least February, before you even try your first pitch. But an optimum pitch is over here right around the end of April and the top of May after you built buzz. OK, it's warmed up. People aren't. It's like it's not cold outside. People aren't all, you know, hardcore in the brain. OK, so now you have an optimum period of pitching from May, June to get fresh budget, July, August. By Labor Day weekend, prime pitching time, May, June, July, August. By Labor Day weekend, everybody has the end of the year in sight. They're trying to shore up what's coming out in the fourth quarter for them. And so taking on a new artist right now is not optimum. By the time you get to October, it's really not looking good for you as a new artist. Now, you may get to managers at this point, okay? And I know a lot of you all are independent. You're saying you don't. I Look, man, even if you're doing an independent label, you're trying to get to a major indie label, you still have to play by these same rules. These are mental games, okay? So... Now that we have all that done, let's talk about, let's say, if you're not pitching your music, but you're just doing business in the industry. Well, here's how I did my uh, 64 Music Publishing Checks video. All right. Let's, let's add in Harry Fox and talk about Harry Fox. As, actually, let's just add in Harry Fox, Music Reports, Music Match, uh, Sound Exchange Quarterly. And Sound Exchange Quarterly is if you want to get paper checks or Sound Exchange Monthly is when you want to get direct deposit. Okay. And then let's add in the MLC and we should be good to go. All right. So this is what my music business calendar looks like. I have all the royalty checks lined up here and I have all the off days. I have my optimum days and I know some other things that will be going on here. So um, check it out. So now music match pays out, uh, I believe, around the 15th of every month. I have it. I have it. Uh, plugged in for every month here and, and HFA is at the end of every month and so it sound exchange monthly at the end of every month so on the 15th your people who are getting music match royalties are calling in they're calling in and this entire week 
they, you know, music match, the phone lines are busy with people trying to figure out what went wrong with their checks and trying to shore up budgets. At least the, every week after every royalty distribution, people are tied up. HFA, Sound Exchange, these people are very disgruntled, okay? So it's going to be, you're going to have about every month, you're going to have a two-week window. That's two weeks after the check came out and two weeks before the check came out where you're going, it's going to be optimum to call the people on the phone. Straight up. And you know I'm not lying to you because you know this is the truth. A lot of you all work in corporate, and it's just what it is, okay? Here's all your checks. All my checks are lined up with the Friday planning, the office clothes for field work on the weekends, the Monday morning quarterbacking, all of this. And there's a lot more you could add. You could add conferences to this thing, too. Hey, everybody, speaking of conferences, all right, adding those conferences to the calendar, I will be speaking at the 2021 Chattanooga Hip Hop Summit coming up on October 16th. 2021 this is going to be at the edney innovation center all right the cool thing about this conference is that it's actually free yes it's free there you can see i go right there so if you want to add this to your music industry conference uh count or your this event to your industry calendar uh i advise you to go ahead and do so those of you all who have spoken with me over the phone know how important that I, you know, I think the Chattanooga market is to the Nashville and Atlanta market. This is a a bridge market, and I feel that everyone in the area from Knoxville to Nashville to Huntsville, Alabama to Birmingham, Alabama, and just anywhere in the in the southeast region, Atlanta as well, and Macon, Georgia as well, should come out to this. Okay, this is a free event. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be on two panels, uh, speaking. So add this to your uh, respective calendars and meet me there. Just make sure you register on Eventbrite because uh, that's how you're going to get your tickets right here. Boom. I'll see you there October 16th. Don't be late for free. All right. Peace. Okay. But you can start to see. So let's count the days here. What did I say? Uh, your optimum days of pitching and getting a lot of stuff done is from May. So we're talking about three, six, nine, twelve days there i think about 12 days every month three six nine twelve uh 13 14 all right that's it you got 52 days to actually pitch your music successfully and have a high a high chance of success from may june july and august that's it 52 days so, get your game plan together, get your promo plans together, shoot your shot. These are 52 optimum days. Anything can happen on any given day. But I'm saying 52 optimum days to make it happen in four months, on, on days Tuesday through Thursday. Okay? So, that is it. That is my spiel. Hopefully, you got a lot of game out of this, and I am out of the computer. Peace. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this. I hope it was really intriguing to you. Uh, yeah, I hope you go out and build your own calendars so that you can keep up with the industry and what's going on. I recommend adding some dates like like uh, like uh, festival dates so you know when the festivals are happening and you have a list of everything that's going on on your own personal music industry calendar. All right. And I, I if I can make this into a downloadable version or I can figure it out, I'll post it on the, the site. Okay. Uh, but other than that, thank you for watching the show. Uh, don't forget to log on to musicmoneymakeover.com. Like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video. And then, um, and, and then check out some of the other videos on the channel. All right? I'll see you all later. Peace. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the show. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to get a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions answered and solved. Thanks for watching.